Hi everyone, I am Dr. Sandeep Sharma, your pediatric super specialty faculty at Prep Ladder. And the INISS uh, results are out for May 24. And we have the topper. We don't have a topper, we have the topper. Yes, we have uh, uh, rank number one pediatric oncology, Dr. Shrishta with us. She has got rank one in pediatric oncology in INISS and it can't get bigger than this. So it's our privilege to invite Dr. Shrishta to this interview. So Dr. Shrishta, congratulations and welcome to this interview. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. So first of all, let us start with your background, what place you belong to and where you did your UGPG from and where you are working by. Uh, sir, I belong to Delhi. I did my UG from Goa Medical College and I did my post-graduation from Lady Harding Medical College, Delhi. After that, I completed two years of SRship and uh, during which I got from Lady Harding only and where I got experiences of different, different branches and specialities. And uh, then I decided I wanted to go for a super specialty and a DM. So after that, currently I am uh, working with the NGO organization because I wanted to study. So I was working with SAS. So on a on a currently on a uh, with NGO organization. So it helps them. Uh, it is uh, based on a small baby trial. So I'm seeing patients there as a pediatric with them. Awesome, awesome. Uh, so Dr. Shrishta, uh, uh, students would be interested in knowing uh, how did you get this rank one? Was it your first attempt in oncology? Yes, sir. It was my first attempt in oncology. Once before, almost one or two years back, I'd answered it. But that time, I'm not prepared at all. Just it was soon after my PG. Uh, so this is my first attempt in pediatric oncology. Okay. So how did you find the exam? Like what were your takeaways from the exam? If you have to, uh, you know, um, guide your younger self, like how was the exam? What was the weightage like? What were the areas from where more questions were asked? And uh, what were the areas where you found that, you know, uh, things can be a bit better? Uh, sir, in uh, this time, sir, in the INISS pediatric oncology, like us like how usually AIMS is, sir, uh, they have a they have a sort of uh, division of questions. They don't uh, always ask straightforward questions. So some of the questions will be tricky. That involves you first making a diagnosis of the patient. Then they will ask you something related to the staging or how you will go about the treatment. So some portion of that, so which required you to be thorough in terms of the entire topic and not just know that this stage is treated like this. And some, but some of them were also straightforward questions. And obviously a lot of AIMS always focuses a lot on the recent advances and the newer drugs that are coming up. So a portion of that was also belonging to that. So what so, were your resources for uh, that you utilized for specifically targeting this exam? Uh, so for pediatric oncology, first thing that I did, I actually decided in January only that I'm going to appear for pediatric oncology. So I started my preparation that time. So first I went through the uh, entire prep, load, prep ladder module for pediatric oncology. Uh, I uh, always learn better when I see the videos. So I went through all the videos uh once along with while reading the notes and uh after that also for other uh, revision of those they uh, i went through the videos at a higher speed to uh because since pediatric oncology is a topic which is very volatile so uh you have to read it once or twice at least in order to go so after that i got a basic idea of all the topics since it covers it very um very well after which I also wanted to go through the standard textbook. So for Len I refer to Lenzowski for that. And sir, most of your videos are also based from that only. So it was uh, very easy. So I went through chapter by chapter for the main cancers. And whatever extra points that I thought, uh, I either added it to the notes there only or I uh, highlighted it in the book for easy revision. So for pediatric oncology, I have done those two things only. And there are also questions from biostats and uh, some allied things which are not directly asked uh, in yeah. other uh, entrance exam. How did you cover those areas? Uh, so for general pediatrics, like AIM, uh, uh, 
need uh, has now become more vast but aims like to aims has some specific topics that they like to always cover like iem like fluid electrolytes and oh, in all your videos also you have also always emphasized so i also tried to pay attention to those topics only that you used to always say that are high yielding like genetics like uh, genetics rickets iem fluid electrolytes so for those topics i've gone through the videos of those topics and the notes from prep ladder only since i was short of time so i did not have time to go through multiple resources and uh, in regards to other systems uh, the topics that are frequently asked in the aims papers like which are common like from respiratory they usually ask in about cystic fibrosis so i went through those videos and those topics that uh, when we see your videos also so you inform that this is high yielding and this is commonly asked in the inis and the central institute so those topics i concentrated on more great so i think uh, uh, you have kept it simple prep ladder uh, nelson and linzowski yes. right so you did not go into too much of uh, other things in journals and all no i did not go through yeah. like for the piles and all those things so you had put videos on the updated versions of those for nrp also the updated version so i've gone through that only i've not read the i did not uh, whatever things where you told that you can get to know extra points if you refer through the journal only those places otherwise i've gone through the videos only and did you solve mcqs and gts also uh yes sir i used to do the uh, mcq practice regarding so for which from whichever topic that i had read so after a few days i used to do the mcq in order to understand how to retain my knowledge okay and uh, there is also a rule uh, like uh, i know a few hardenians who have done their mbbs and md from uh, lady harding and they always say one thing sir uh, we get to see a lot there is a good workload and that workload also helps us in uh, you know remembering the clinical scenarios better your take on this yes of course sir i've done my md pediatrics plus sr ship so i can safely say that uh, i have seen most of the cases and i have seen most uh, malab, the exposure regarding pediatrics especially in lady harding is great so obviously and our teachers they uh, when they take the rounds also so similarly the ex experience that you get from the patients those that always helps in clinical scenarios especially yes because you know what is to be uh, done because you have actually done it yourself also the grilling which happens uh, i think uh, we we feel bad during during the rounds but uh, over a long period of time they actually help you in grasping those finer points yes sir Uh, i remember sir for uh, one of uh, my one of my consultants had asked me regarding one of the newer uh, syndromes the frazier syndrome and he had asked me once when i was seeing a nephrotic patient and so that was around one and a half two years back till and then it actually came also in the exam and matlab so i remembered it from uh, that time so yes correct it correct definitely there uh, so uh, see um there are, there is there is a school of thought which also says that uh, when you are targeting pediatric oncology uh, apart from lenzowski and nelson you also need to read the finer details of these chemotherapeutic regimens which are there uh, your take on this do students need to actually go into those many details itna body surface area for itne hours itna cycles and so on or do you think that just the bare minimum things but remembering them accurately is more important your take on this sir i think not to go into chemotherapy not to go into the full protocols because it is not possible also for you to remember whenever you try to do a lot of things you end up not remembering the basic things also and uh, what they also they obviously you have to focus on the drugs that are given the side effects of the drugs if there is any specific ways in which those drugs are given those things need to be remembered but exact full protocol with body those things they don't need to be remembered of course for uh, all icl protocol some basic things it is expected because uh, most in most hospitals all is managed uh, so that is expected but the other protocols deeper details i did not go through so for example like a wilms tumor or say retinoblastoma or for uh, like any lch 
only the name of the drugs which are being used and the general principles i think that should be fine right yes sir. general principles on how to treat them and uh, what is the difference what is the different stages and yes i had studied the general principles only predominantly and, and you studied it quite well i i, I don't think it can be better than this <laughs> so uh, so i think so so let yes see this is the final entrance exam that you will be giving not the final exam obviously there will be more exams coming your way but this is the final entrance exam like after that this is what i have told all my family members that after this i will stop giving no more entrance exam. exams after this <laughs> that is true see you need to end of the day yes family is very important and i know uh, it is not an individual success there is also family and uh, blessings and teachers involved so uh, this is a big success it can't get bigger than this people you would like to mention who played a role in your success story sir uh, my parents my sister my husband uh, my uh, fa- my entire family my father in law everyone has been very supportive i had actually recently got married in november so yeah. and i started studying in january <laughs> so in january so it was definitely uh, and all my seniors and my teachers definitely all the teachers uh, who have supported me and have taught me to reach till here definitely and so they definitely they're all involved in my success excellent excellent so uh, we on behalf of the entire preplanet team i wish you great success all the best for your future now you are going to become one of the leading pediatric oncologists of the country and may you allay the suffering of all these young kids who are suffering from various malignancies and we do wish you all the very best for your future thank you so much sir thank you so much thank you thank you thank you the pleasure is mine but sir thank you so much la i really like to say thank you your videos are very concise and they are explained in a very good way and they were very helpful i i have heard them multiple times the multiple topics and it was very good sir thank you so much i'm really glad to know that uh, my efforts were of some value in your uh, success journey and uh, we we uh, see i always believe in taking some uh, inputs from the people who have given the exam so based upon your input for your future juniors uh, will be will be incorporating certain more elements in our new version once it comes out so i'll be uh, needing your inputs regarding what more can be done related to pediatric oncology also thank you so much for your time and uh, wish you all the very best thank, thank you, you so much sir thank you so much